Welcome to today's workshop all about closet design and installation. My name is Robin Rebel, and I'm joined here today with my partner. I'm Antonio Lopez. And we are going to go through all of the basics of getting you that dream closet that you would like. So what exactly are we going to talk about today? Well, the first thing that we really want to look at is you're going to need to take inventory. How much stuff do you have so you know how much space you need yep. to put it all in? Now, the next is maximizing and organizing all of your stuff. Yep. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a workshop if we didn't show you how to install it. And then finally, we're going to look at designing customized options for you. How can you make this basic system work for your specific needs? Yeah, that's a great key point there is mm -hmm. focus on yourself. This is about what you want to accomplish because there's a lot of different ways and you see, see things on, on social media, on trend, a lot of options out there. But when you start off at that first point, Robin, that you mentioned, the inventory and the intention, this is where we get started. So ask yourself this question. Look at your stuff and think about what do you have. Now keep this in mind. We're focusing on traditional closets. We're talking about your wardrobe, your clothes. Yeah. Uh, but this can, can apply with any type of space you're organizing, sure. whether it's a pantry. You know, so think about those basic principles, but answer that question. What do you have? And start to make a list if that helps you. But get that gauge because once you figure out everything that you have, you can now, now decide what's the best way to get that organization implemented. One of the tips that you mentioned, Rob, and I remember you talked about this, is uh, you're a big believer in the hanger trick. Yes, I love the hanger trick. What do you, so you put the hanger in one way that's right. opposite to the other hangers? Yep, you put your hangers in backwards, right? Mm -hmm. And after six months, or you could do three months, if you look in your closet, whatever is still turned backwards, you haven't touched that piece of clothing. Yeah. So do you really need to have it in your closet? Opportunity to make a donation, sell right. it off, hand it down. Mm -hmm. But it's just really helpful because if you're answering the question of what do you have and you've got too much, then think about ways to help out. I know firsthand growing up in New York City, really tiny apartment, yeah. space was, was a commodity. So you know we really had to be intentional with what we had at any given time. Mm -hmm. As for now, I own a home and it's a different story. I gotta, I gotta ask, ask myself, why do I have all this stuff? <laughs> That's exactly it. It's a, it's a good and bad. You know, if you're limited space, yep. you've got to make the most out of that space. And if you have too much space, you have a tendency to kind of just stick things in there. But if you're not utilizing mm -hmm. it and somebody else can, why are you still holding yeah, on to exactly. it? Exactly. You know? So we check that off. We, we've got the inventory of what mm -hmm. we have. And then we're answering now the question of what's the purpose? What do I want to accomplish with this closet space with whatever nook and cranny you're trying to organize. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got a ton of storage, you can organize in, in a bunch of different ways. But again, the point here is figure out what you have and then figure out what you want to do and what's the reason, what's the reason you want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a really kind of helpful starting point here because this can be overwhelming, you know, right. for those that are not like great self-starters. You're like, man, I just don't, I don't want to start this at all. You know, there's too much going on. Just let it be. It's good enough. It works right now. But. It's easier just to keep stick, sticking yeah. stuff in there rather than actually taking the time to organize it, yeah. right? Check that off. Mm -hmm. And that brings us now to that next part because now we know what we have, what we want to accomplish, so you can get a better idea of how you want to store these items in your closet space. Right. And Robin, I know you're big on... Uh, on the, the next part coming up. Okay. I am. I'm really big on the organization of it all. And really, this is about maximizing that space and organizing your stuff. So now you've kind of taken your inventory. You said, hey, I want my closet to be this, right? Just to have all my clothes in it. It also needs to be a linen closet. Whatever your purpose is, now it's time. How do we figure out how much space do we need to accomplish the purpose. And we do that by organizing and maximizing. And the first thing that we do is group like things together. That's so important. And grouping can be different for everybody. What makes sense to you? So maybe if you have two rows of hanging, you want to put all of your work clothes on the top row and all of your more casual clothes on the bottom row. Or maybe it makes more sense to you to have all of your shirts on the top row and all of your pants on the bottom row, right? Yeah. It all is about what works for your particular mm -hmm. lifestyle. But one of the things you really want to consider, especially when organizing a closet, is what do you hang? 
versus what do you fold, mm -hmm. right? Because <laughs> different people hang different things. I mean, obviously, usually your shirts, your pants, your skirts, your dresses, those are going to get hung. But what about things like sweatshirts or sweaters? I'm a big folder for sweaters, all right? I don't like to hang my sweaters. Mm -hmm. My husband loves to hang his hoodie sweatshirts. That's a foldable item to me. So <laughs> figure out what do you need more room for? Hanging versus folding. And by laying it all out and grouping like things together, either by how you're going to use them or how they're going to stay together, that's going to give you a visual of how much space you actually need. What about versus what you toss on the floor? That's a... Well, that's, that's my yeah. go-to. The stuff that winds up <laughs> on the chair never counts. And I know y'all have a chair somewhere. <laughs> Robin, I know that there's, there's a lot of questions that we're throwing out here mm -hmm. to answer. And, and you, you brought up this one kind of example. I think about, uh, I, tra I travel a lot and mm -hmm. I love traveling. You know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have visited a lot of great places. But I think about the way that an airplane maximizes the space and the way they organize. So think about it, whenever you've gone on an airplane, you've got essentially a metal tube that has every single nook and cranny of that airplane designed to optimize storage. Mm -hmm. All right, so you look at your overhead bin for carry-on luggage, for your backpacks, coats, even sometimes when it gets you know, cold. You've got storage underneath the seat in front of you. You've got the seat back pockets. You've even got more little mm -hmm. nooks and crannies up in the front of the plane. Mm -hmm. So the point here is that it's possible, no matter what the size of your space is, you can maximize every nook and cranny, so maybe sure. be like an airplane. Exactly. Yeah. Think of it in terms of that. I mean, you know, even when you're getting on, if you ever saw that little galley section, yep. you know, how do they feed and do snacks for everybody on that plane? They use every little square inch, every little yep. nook and cranny, and that is so important. And think about your storage space the same way. Yeah. Don't waste any of it. That's all valuable real estate that we need to look at. So let's take a look at some of the ways that you can maximize it. You need to think outside of the standard, right? Yeah. Most of the time when you're putting storage inside your closet, you'll have a shelf that'll go up so high, right? But there's always room above that, all the way up to the ceiling. Are you utilizing that space properly? Do you have uh, organization uh, items that will help you utilize that space all the way up to the top yeah. of the ceiling. Um, are you using the back of your closet door or behind your closet door? Where you're, if your door's open, are you using that space either behind the closet yeah. door or on the back of the closet door? That's valuable real estate. Yeah. That's great for hanging things like scarves and belts and ties and things like that that aren't very thick but can take up a lot of space inside your closet. Think about all of the ways you can use all of this space and make it, you know, support exactly how you want to use it. There are little storage customizations, which we'll talk about at the end, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. items that are kind of specialized for everything that you want to do. Yeah. And we'll look at some of those a little bit later. Great little sneak peek that we're going to show you some <laughs> yeah. cool accessories that you may not have been aware of. And again, the, the kind of the point of all of this is making it easy to access while you're maximizing that storage, just right. like that airplane example uh, from traveling. So Absolutely. Uh, great stuff, uh, Robin. You know, we're, we're on this really great track of organizing and maximizing. Uh, this is really gonna bring us close to the install portion right. of this workshop. Mm -hmm. But I know that in order to, to make the install successful, there's still a little bit more of information because when we're looking at installing whatever system you're going with or the framework, you still kind of have to make that decision. Now is the time to look at systems. First of all, you always want to measure carefully, and we'll talk about that when we go into the actual install, but how much room do you actually have sure. in your closet? And then look for a system that is closest to what you think you're going to need. The compatibility. Now, yeah, that compatibility, yep. right? Look for something that you think is going to work. Do you need two levels of hanging or would you benefit from two levels of hanging versus a single bar of hanging, right? I love that two level of hanging. You're basically doubling your closet yeah. space. So that's a great way to think of that. Now, the wire shelving is our number one seller. And I know a lot of people mm -hmm. are not fans of the wire shelving, but these are the greatest kits. They're super easy to install. 
Um, and they are incredibly versatile, and you can change that look, which we're gonna get into in a minute. Now, one thing that a lot of people complain about is that weight capacity, right? So the wire shelvings are a number one seller, but they come in two different styles. We have what's called the regular duty mm -hmm. and the heavy duty. Now, a regular duty wire shelving system is gonna hold about 45 pounds per foot of uh, shelving, okay? And that seems like a decent amount, but once you start getting your clothes in there, and especially, you know, if you've got the heavy winter coats and things like that, mm -hmm. it adds up quickly. And that's one of the biggest complaints. People say that, you know, things start coming out of the wall, yeah, the bowing. wire starts bowing, things don't really, it doesn't look as good. So we also have a heavy duty option. Now that heavy duty option is actually gonna hold 90 pounds per linear foot, so twice as much. Now, of course, it is gonna be a little bit more expensive. Minimal. Minimal, though. Yeah. It's only about 20% more expensive to get twice or double the holding capacity, the weight capacity. So that's something that you really wanna look at. Um, you know, maybe go a little bit heavier on that. Now, if you're really dead set against, I do not want wire shelving, that's okay. They have the wood systems that are out there or the heavy melamine, the coated wood, mm -hmm. um, and those are great systems. They're beautiful. Um, you know, they give a very upscale, sophisticated look. They can hold a ton of weight. They are by far the heaviest duty out right. there but that comes with a cost. They are also the more expensive ones that are out there. So you kind of need to determine what's more important to you. It's the look, the price, and the functionality. So which one of those is your number one priority? Yep. And from that, you can determine what closet organization system is best for you. Now the good news is, regardless of what one you choose, a lot of the installation is pretty standard, and we're gonna take a look at that next, aren't we? Yeah, simple principles that apply across the board because what you'll see is you can almost like Frankenstein this type of system sure. where even if you start off with that wire shelving, you can do built-ins, you can get you know that wood look as mm -hmm. well, maybe in parts of your closet. So sure. again, principles across the board, we're gonna cover that in this install, and you can apply it because uh, you'll see we'll highlight things like stud location, making mm -hmm. sure things are secure, flush, measuring, and that it's all level. That's a key. Level is important. All right, Robin, so let's level up this workshop and let's play this install video. Again, this is going to be a basic vented wire shelving installation, uh, so check this out right now. Everbuilt's line of closet organizers are a great way to optimize the storage space of any closet and you can only find them at Home Depot. Installing it is a simple project that takes just a few tools, a little patience, and a few hours to complete. In addition to the included accessories and materials, here's what you'll need for the installation. Measure your closet before buying to be sure you have the right Everbuild organizer for your space. In this video, we will be using the five foot to eight foot closet organizer kit to install into studs. This kit is a great option for consumers looking for a solution for a reach-in closet with a width between 5 and 8 feet. Before installation, choose the right layout plan from your product manual to match the width of your closet. Now, we're ready to install your Everbuilt Closet Organizer. Measure 84 inches from the floor and level each hang track. Secure the hang track to stud locations using the included panhead screws. If stud locations are not available, Use included drywall anchors to secure hang track to the wall. Install your hardware every 16 inches or closer along the hang track. Try to line up the hang tracks with studs if they're available. Attach the vertical rails to the hang track in the proper locations for your selected organizer width, as shown in the product manual. The space between the center rails should be 24 inches apart or less. Retain a minimum space of 2 inches at the ends of the hang track. Use panhead screws when securing to studs. Insert the shelf brackets into the vertical rails at your desired positions based on your chosen configuration. Install the shelf caps on the end of your shelves. Push the shelves on the shelf brackets toward the wall. Let the brackets tip pass through the front lip of the shelves. Place the back wire of the shelf behind the bracket hook. 
Then, pull the shelf forward until the back is secured within the hook. Install your rod support brackets. Put the closet rod support bracket at an angle and then place the back part onto the second horizontal wire of the shelf. Pull down the top of the support bracket to snap it onto the front of the shelf. Repeat this process for the rest of your support brackets. Place the rod caps on the end of your closet rods. You can now attach the rods by snapping them into the rod support brackets. Now your installation is complete. Unless you are installing a decorative kit that includes decorative shelf covers, or you have purchased decorative shelf covers as an accessory for your kit. To install your decorative snap-on shelf covers, remove the protective film covers from both sides before installation. And make sure the length of the covers match the length of your wire shelves. Place the cover onto the wire shelf. Push it all the way to the rear until the front lip of the cover is flush with the front lip of the wire shelf. Snap down the rear of the shelf cover over the back of the bracket at each intersection with the vertical rails. Everbuilt closet organizers are a great solution to maximize the space of any closet. All right, welcome back from that video. So as you can see, Robin, this is a pretty straightforward project. You know, this is in terms of a DIY, you're looking at beginner level, uh, really, really simple turnaround. Doesn't take a lot of tools, doesn't take a lot of time, but I know, Robin, it's important that we just kind of focus on a couple couple items or areas that can help translate with other projects in the home as well. Absolutely. Uh, so let's take some time right now. Robin, what, what's something that's that you saw that's really kind of a, a focus area in this project? You know what, I wanna take a couple of minutes and really talk about, kind of just delve a little bit deeper into the tools, yeah. right? So the tools are, for the most part, are pretty basic tools. There's not a heck of a lot you need, you know, a pencil, screwdrivers. Yeah. There are things that are gonna make your life easy. The two, Biggest things that I think you really want to make sure you have is a good level, first of all. You want to have a really good level because like we said earlier, leveling is going to make a huge difference. Because not only, um, you know, if you have a long one like this, this is great. Um, if you only have a shorter one, like a, a little, you know, 12 like inch one, size, yeah, the a torpedo guy. size, that's okay too. Even if you have a teeny, teeny, tiny one, it doesn't matter. Level, keeping that level, and remember when you are leveling it, you just want to make sure that the bubble is in between the lines. Um, this is what's going to make one of the biggest differences because keeping everything level and sturdy is going to make sure that nothing bows or twists or... Uh, you know, has any issues going through. So that's talking about this this, yes. this hanging rail right here, that, that first piece that got put on, mm -hmm. make sure that this one is... Is level. Because it's a domino effect. If this is not level, you're going to see everything else will start to, to shift and then you're going to have to start all over again. Right, and that's it. So by making sure that this piece is level, and this is really the key to it all, because if this is level, then all of the standards that you hang on it are automatically going to be level because this piece is level. So you really, this is taking a little bit of extra time to make sure that that top rail is level. Now the next most important tool that you really want to look at is that stud finder. That yep. stud finder is so important, right? Yep. We're really gonna need, I, I can't stress this enough. We talked about the weight restrictions, right? Yep. The 45 pounds or the 90 pounds. Um, those are given to you with the assumption that your system is attached to the studs in your wall. So ideal, ideal conditions. Ideal Best conditions, scenario. right. So you wanna make sure you wanna utilize that stud finders. Super easy to use, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, Studs generally are what they call 16 inches on center. Yeah. So the center of one stud to the center of the next stud is usually 16 inches. It can go as much as, as 24, but it's most common that it's 16. It's actually so common that on the tape measure itself, it'll be marked off. It'll actually be marked off. You'll see that the 16 is red, and you'll also see if you come out further, the 32. Yep also red. So that's how common that is. And when we say 16 on center, that's exactly what that means. It means the center of the stud, yep. right? Because that, that screw that you're putting in, if it's offset, that's going to compromise that, that weight capacity rating mm -hmm. and it can fail over time. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important to get in the, in the center of that stud. Right. So you want to hit as many points as you can 
into those studs. And that stud finder is just a real easy way to find it. Mm -hmm. Super easy to use. Um, you know, there's a variety of different kinds. First of all, you can get magnetic ones that'll work yeah. by finding the nail or screw heads. Yep because those are always put into studs. Yep. You can also get the scanning type. They're really simple. All they do is kind of show you either side of the stud mm -hmm. and you mark that off. Now, if you are unsure, you're like, okay, well, I think I found the sides, right? Um, and I wanna make sure that the center is there. Super easy way to do that, yeah. right? You just take either um, a thin nail, like a finishing nail, yep or an awl, yep. or something like that, and just tap it in that spot. Your drywall is about a half an inch thick. If, you're, if whatever that nail is goes in about a half an inch, and then you meet with a lot of resistance, you're on a stud, and that's a good thing, okay? Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's really important. So finding the studs. Now, if you can only hit a couple of studs, then you're gonna wanna make sure you're using the toggles, right? These are drywall toggles. You don't want to put the entire thing up with drywall toggles. You're not going to have the same. Yeah, it's just it's not an ideal scenario. Like these, right. there's there's different anchors and toggle mm -hmm. bolts that can help with with really maximizing that strength. But when you're comparing it to going to stud, it's it's night and day. Right. So best practice is studs as much as possible, and then any area where there's not a stud, try to use uh, toggle bolts. Or, or anchors that are gonna have that higher right. weight, weight capacity. That rating. drywall anchor. And if you are going into a masonry wall, a cement block wall, yeah. brick wall, something like that, make sure you're using the correct masonry anchors for that, yeah. all right? So you can find them. Now, some of your kits, I know a lot of our kits, they actually come with the hardware pack. Kind of yep. has all of the hardware you mm -hmm. need with it. So that's another consideration you may want to think about when you're buying Purchasing, a system. It Does it come with all the hardware? Does it have everything you need into it? Now, we were still talking about tools a little bit. Mm -hmm. The only other tool that I think is going to be really, really useful for you mm -hmm. is going to be your drill driver. Okay, um, an, an electric drill driver. Just because you are taking somewhat long screws you're putting them into your studs. Mm -hmm. So you should be pre-drilling first. All of that'll be in your, <laughs> Get your pilot directions. Holes. Yep, drill your pilot holes and then drive this. If you're gonna do that by hand, you can. <laughs> it's gonna take a lot it's longer. It's gonna take a lot longer and it's gonna take a lot of effort. This is gonna make your life so much simpler. So get a power drill. Uh, this mm -hmm. is an impact driver, but mm -hmm. there's, you know, if you've got a, a general basic power drill where you mm -hmm. can dial back the power, keep it on a lower setting, mm -hmm. and then get some drill bits to make those holes that you mentioned, the pilot holes, pilot holes, and then screw in uh, the bolts. Right, screw in those bolts. Hardware. So those are the three biggest ones. Anything else is just gonna be a bonus. Um, often you can get these shelves cut to size mm -hmm. um, at your local store. So you may be able to get them cut down to size if you need to cut the wire. Yep. If you did not, you can do it yourself as yeah. well. There's a couple different options. I, I, I like things like a rotary tool just Love because that. they have a lot of different uh, bits and ends. So this could be a, a really helpful hobby tool, but also for projects and DIY. Mm -hmm. It's small, it's easy to handle, and you use a metal cutting bit to kind of cut through that, that, that wire shelving. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of how you cut that wire shelving, just make sure that you file it off at the end to make sure you smooth out the edges. The kits do come with a cap, a little plastic cap you pop on, but again, if you're cutting it, uh, this is a great tool, but not the only way to do it, just a, a right. good recommendation. You can also use bolt cutters. Um, hacksaw. Can, hacksaw, um, angle grinder. If you do have a larger yeah. angle grinder, if you have a lot of DIY tools at home, you know, the Dremel is a lot easier. It's a lot smaller. Yeah. It's easier to handle when you're working with an angle grinder if you don't have a lot of practice with it. And Robin, these... These come in different sizes, so folks, yes. I, you know, you can get them in a four foot, you can get in a six foot. It, there's a lot of different options, so don't feel like you have to cut it. You know, it's more like if you need to. Right. Uh, you're and going to not only that, design. speaking about sizes, they also come in different depths yep. as well, which we didn't really talk about. You have yep. a 12 foot shelf, and then you usually have a 16 or an 18 inch yep. shelf. So you could get different depths in these shelves too, which help out quite a bit. So that's kind of the basics on your tools right there. Yep. Um, having the right tools, and like I said, starting with that level and going into yep. the studs, you can't go wrong with yeah, the system. Yeah, most important. Set yourself mm -hmm. up for success. 
All right, so we've we've got kind of the highlights down here. Now, we, we, if we've got the system chosen, we installed mm -hmm. it, and now we're looking at it, we're like, all right, I really want to take it to that next level and maximize and organize like we talked about before. Mm -hmm. This is where that design is going to empower us to customize it so it's even better. So right. let's talk about what are some of those accessories, different ways to maximize that design so that it's customized for your needs. You know, there are so many different things that you can add to this system. So you start with a basic system, and that was one of the things we were talking about too, is if you're not quite sure what you need, you start with a basic system, live with it for a little while, and then you can add on to it. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that you could do, and this is the biggest thing, a lot of people like the ease of the wire shelves, they like the cost of the wire shelves, they just can't stand the look mm -hmm. of the wire shelves. And that's where these come in, right? These are shelf covers. These completely, you'll notice, right? It's got that wood grain right there. So it gives you a much finished, much more finished look. You can get them in a variety of colors, right? You've got the weathered wood. They're lightweight, right? But they look, as they're hanging on over the shelf, it looks like a really thick, substantial shelf, right? So um, they come in that light birch, the weathered gray, the white. So you can actually cover up that wire and the beautiful thing is you can you know if you look at these right they kind of have unfinished edges they come with edge pieces that just snap right, right on in. they pop in there snap right on so they'll finish even the edges of this so this is a great way to kind of dress up those wire shelves because that's one of the biggest complaints yeah. people are like i don't like the look of it Yep. Now, in addition to that, when you saw the install video, they had those plastic rod hooks, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't really like the plastic. It, it, it looks, I don't, I don't like the look of it. Level up. Level up. <laughs> there you go. These are metal. They come in a variety of finishes, right? They attach the exact same way. So even if you have current wire shelves and you just want to update it a little bit, you can add covers and update your hardware. Beautiful, right? You'll get that same look. It'll still hold the rod the exact same way. Level up. Great call out right there. Love that's, that. I mean, that's just the sound, the feel of this alone, mm -hmm. it feels way better. Because that was one of my hesitations with wire shelvings. Is you saw that plasticness, it just right. didn't feel just didn't feel right. Didn't feel substantial. What else have we got there, Robin? We well, got the drawer here. Drawer systems, right? Now you can get a variety of drawer systems from single drawers, you can get deep drawers, you can stack multiple drawers. And the beautiful thing about it is they hang the exact same way that your shelves do. You'll actually put in a bracket arm, just like you would with a standard shelf, and these slide right on to that, that bracket. That's great. Right? So all it does is just slide right in there and you can add shelving units. And again, they come in a variety of finishes, just like your shelf covers. They have soft clothes, so they're really, really yep. nice. Um, so again, you can get that kind of built-in look still using the same base and same install yep. package as your wire shelving. It feels like Legos at one point, like you're really being, being able to just build it out in different ways as you kind of go along. So you don't have to do this out, out the gate, like at the no. beginning. Mm -mm. You can add these on after the fact. Start off. Right, so start off with wherever you can. The final feature that I absolutely love too, because this is my biggest challenge, is where do I put all of my shoes? So many shoes. So many shoes. You have shoe shelves, and they are designed to be installed, so you see they have the wire on the bottom, right? They have the finish on the top, and they're designed to be installed this way with a little lip in the front so that when you put your shoes on, they don't slide off. And they are installed at an angle. The bracket goes in, it already automatically gives you that angle, and you can just stick your shoes. Oh, look at that, right there. Wait, I had to see, I had to see if it was true. Live and in action, okay. right? right? There we go. So there you go. That is your shoe shelf. So again, these are additions. You can add them on. It's a I'll great feature. Thank you. Got to put it back here in this beautiful backdrop. Put it back, put it back in our backdrop there. So these are some really great ways to help customize that standard shelving uh, system that you purchased. Make it look mm -hmm. a little more upscale. 
make it a little more custom to your tastes um, and to fit your storage needs. Enhance right? functionality, enhance aesthetics. I love it because that's a, that's really that was my personal hesitation with some of the wire shelving. Right, I agree. That. All right, so Robin, we still got a couple more opportunities. So we mentioned some really great accessories here, but you know, don't limit yourself on this mm -hmm. because even if there aren't accessories that are specifically designed for your closet. Well, you can think outside the box. So this is a great opportunity to even use things like bins, baskets, any type of different size container or storage. Mm -hmm. You can use it in conjunction with this framework. And Robin, I love this. This, is, this, this is reminds great. me of an accordion right there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. But it's storage. That, right. All of that storage. Collapsible I mean, storage. It's, it's almost as tall as I am. And you have all of this storage in here that you can fold things. Right. So now you're using, this is designed to hang on your closet rod. So you're using about a foot of linear rod space, but mm -hmm. look at all of this vertical space exactly. that you can get out of it um, is a great way to increase that storage. Right. So again, utilizing every square inch, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Play around with design, keep customizing, and again, keep seeing what's going to work best for you because uh, that's going to vary from person to person. But Love the, the different options, the different ways to implement this. Uh, so for homework assignments for our, our audience out there is sure. just start looking on, even on homedepot.com, you can see all of these different accessories that we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, but start looking at what you currently have and then assess if you need to buy some additional wires or if you need to just make some adjustments. Uh, yeah. Again, great customization, great versatility with this. You know, when we're talking about those bins and things like that, you, a couple of things you want to think of. Uh, first of all, what do you want it to look like? Do you want your closet to kind of look like a showroom? Yeah, where you're true. like, hey, yep. can I get something a little fancy? Show it off. Show it all off. Or do I want just utilitarian, right? So mm -hmm. let's say, like me, you got a ton of shoes. Your shoe shelves are great for your everyday shoes. Maybe, maybe you're a sneakerhead, right? You have oh. tons and tons of shoes. Well, those clear plastic shoe boxes mm -hmm. allow you to stack, still see what mm -hmm. you have, but then utilize that space, like I said, all the way up to the ceiling, yep. as high as you can. Um, smaller shelving units that actually attach on to your current shelves mm -hmm. may be good for things like handbags yeah. and smaller items that you can kind of show off a little yeah. bit. Remember, this is your closet. Utilize it how you need to. If you need to put your out of season stuff yep. stacked all the way up to the ceiling, get some nice closed storage totes or bags. Keep it sealed off. But maybe they have some clear in them or they are clear in the bottom yeah. so you can still see what's in there. Utilize it all. It's great. Don't be afraid to use these accessories. Great tip to add there is, is being able to see. So the clear storage units or, or items, helpful for that. And then if label it, take it a step further. Just anything to help you succeed. Because right. it, you know, it just it makes it more enjoyable and easier to, to manage and sustain. Right. That's the key there. And I think that is the key. You know, it's, it's great to spend all this time to organize it, but if you're not going to be able to maintain it, it's just going to go back to the way it is. So it's so much easier if you have a place for everything, mm -hmm. then when you're done with it, you know exactly where it goes instead of having to use that, oh, great, now where am I going to put this? Where is it going to wind up? Now I've got to find a place for it, and, you know, and then it just kind of gets crazy after. So bringing it back full circle, that airplane it. analogy, it's, it's saving space, it's making the space look clean, mm -hmm. it's making it neat, and it's also making everything that's, vi that's stored, uh, it's easily accessible. Mm -hmm. You can check those off. Yeah. Uh, this is great stuff, and we really hope that it, it helped inspire you and gives you a little more confidence that one, you can do this and you can do this well. Because if we're recapping today's workshop, we talked about, again, defining the, the items that you have, so taking that inventory, and then determining the intention of that closet space or that organization space. Mm -hmm. Then figuring out how can I maximize and organize like an airplane or whichever way that works best for you uh, because then that's gonna get you prepped to succeed with a, a great install based on the system of your choice. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't end there. You can kind of continually evolve and design it so that it continues to suit your needs uh, both for aesthetics and for functionality. And as things, you know, as things, your wardrobe may grow, as yeah. things change, uh, different times in your life may change, and you may need different storage options. So these are great. That's why we love these systems. Very Just versatile. Be, right. They're so versatile.
So hopefully this gives you some great ideas and information that's gonna help you with this project. And don't worry if you didn't get it all, uh, make sure that you check out our resource guide, download that, a ton of great helpful links right there. Uh, it's in that related content tool. But uh, again, we just, uh, we love helping inspire and we really do hope that this makes you feel better about taking on this project. So Robin, that just leaves us with the one last order of business. You, know what, you know what it is, right? I do, I know what that is. We gotta say two words. And that's thank you. Thank you. Thank you on behalf from everyone here at the Home Depot, on behalf of Rob and myself. We appreciate y'all. And we hope to see you soon on another Homeowner 101 or DIY workshop. Bye, y'all. Thanks, everyone.